Oh, hey, my name is Matteo Berman Sample, and for my senior capstone, I'm going to be going around to a handful of other seniors and interviewing them about what they're doing for their capstones. And I'm doing this because, uh, A, uh, for fun, and because I really like uh, socializing with people, socializing with people, and talking to them, and just getting to know them. And B, I want to take experience using camera equipment and different, and learning how to do sound and just film production in general. Um, because I, that's what I want to do in life uh, after college. And um, yeah, I, I just love doing this. And I really I was really excited to uh, work with uh, West, the people at Westford Cat and just get the experience. I was really excited about this project because I'd never done anything quite like it before. I had taken some documentary courses at Mass Art in the past, but this, but this was, uh, I was going to do this completely by myself. Editing, filming, um, sound, lighting, everything was done by me. And this is my first time doing it, so. I, I, it was, it was nerve-wracking at first, but I actually got the hang of it pretty quickly, I think, and I found it to be something that I quite like to do. I mean, I never really thought I would love editing, but it's actually easier than I thought it would be. It, it took uh, a little bit to get to learn all the tips and tricks about it, but I think with a little help from the people here, I actually got pretty good at it, and it was really cool going all over the place to meet other seniors and find out what they were doing for their capstones. It was just a lot of fun, and I learned a lot, and yeah. Hello there. I'm Matteo Berman Sample. I'm a senior at Westford Academy, and for my capstone, I'm going to be talking to a couple other seniors about what they're doing for their capstone. Here I am at Westford Academy, where I'll be talking to one senior who is doing a mural, and one senior who is making an 1890s ball gown for their capstone. I'm Evelyn Miller, and I'm painting a mural for my capstone at Westford Academy. Basically, the idea behind our mural was that we wanted to capture the pandemic and how everyone was um, affected by it. And we were all at home and ice we felt very isolated. So the one way we could all like become like come together was by watching online performances and Zoom was a really good platform for that. And I think in general art and music um, are really good at unifying people because it's something that everyone enjoys. And during these like dark times, we all wanted something positive to look forward to. And I, I just think the bright colors of like the rainbow um, really like radiate like happiness and like togetherness. Hi, I'm Jennifer Thomas and I'm painting this mural along with Evelyn. And one of my ideas was to add dance to the mural because I dance, so I wanted to make it a bit more personal to me. And we're gonna put, we have one silhouette there and we're going to put one um, on the other side because one thing uh, that really helped me get through the whole quarantine period was Zoom dance classes so we'd all be in our houses and would still all get to dance together and the whole mural is basically about how music can was bringing people together and I felt like dance was a big part of that too. So I decided to do a mural because out of like all the options for like creating an art piece I feel like it's the most visual and like everyone walks down the staircase or it's very it's very like like a popular staircase so i knew that people would be able to see it and like appreciate it and um like display cases are cool but i don't think people will like take the time to actually like stand there and like see what's in the display case um so evelyn asked me to help out with her mural and i've always wanted to do one at the school but i had like no ideas and so she came to me with this one and I really liked it and I decided to do it with her. Okay. I had a pretty good experience painting. Um, at first I was a little bit worried because I had never done something on a large scale before, but uh, we took it step by step and we broke it down so it wasn't too hard to accomplish. And I think painting is really relaxing, especially during this time of AP exams. I definitely needed a distraction. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun painting it. It was really relaxing and I just really liked kind of being able to make my mark on the school because I feel like I haven't really done much noteworthy here. I've just sort of been in the middle of the crowd and I feel like this is a, it's nice to kind of show that I was kind of here and I did something. <laughs> Hey there, my name is Aniket Makija, and I'm a senior at Westford Academy. For my capstone this year, I am reconstructing an 1890s ball gown with all the underpinnings and undergarments provided. So uh, the reason why I'm doing it is one, for fun, and two, because I would like to have, um, 
I would like for the history department to have some some materials and some teaching materials to teach students next year about the time period around of the late Victorian era. So um, over here I have some of the stuff that I have been working on for the past three weeks. Uh, I still haven't gotten on, started on the gown yet. That's going to start hopefully next week, but you know, time is not on my side these past, past couple of days. So uh, one of the first things that I did make is a petticoat. I made two of them. I'm in the second. I'm in the middle of making the second one. Uh, it's made out of cotton and um, it's drafted from an 1890s sewing manual. Uh, same thing with the second one. The second one's made out of silk, and a lot of like Victorian ball gowns, they usually had like a, some sort of silk petticoat, like over um, on top of their corset to give it more floofiness to the actual skirt. Um, it's from the same drafting manual. It's changed a little bit. This one has a curved yoke, uh, a curved waistband. This one's going to have a straight edge waistband. And yeah, to add uh, some more uh, fullness in the back, uh, Victorians love to use something called bum rolls or bustle pads. They're basically glorified pillows that are quilted and have a bunch of something stuffed in there. It could be horse hair, cotton, uh, fabric scraps, um, I don't know, anything that you want to stuff into a, into a pillow, you probably would have stuffed into this. I spent six hours drafting this from a 1903 pat patent, and it turned out somewhat all right. So here it is. It's going to make your butt look bigger. That's what it's going to do. So this little friend over here, um, it's, I'm not sure if it's from 1890, it's a sh shuttle machine. It could be from 1920, I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to just say it's 1890 for historical accuracy purposes, but I'm not 100% sure. It is old, it's almost 100 years old probably. Um, it's not electric, like I've told you, it's a uh, shuttle machine, which means that there is a um, there is like a little wheel over here with a little um, with a cording and down at the bottom, if you can't see, there is a um, this little uh, pedal thing that makes the machine move while it sews. So right now I am binding the corset. So this is the edging and it's just getting some binding on it so uh, the raw edges don't come in. Um, today for me is going to be a bit of a catch up day. It's going to be trying to finish this uh, lovely corset. And also, uh, there is a uh, petticoat over there. And it just needs a bit of a hem. And then that's going to be it for the undergarments, hopefully. <laughs> I also have gotten my uh, skirt pattern drafted. A friend of mine drafted my, uh, the train for the gown. And over there is the actual silk for it. So many, as most of you guys know, many Victorian garments usually consisted of multiple undergarments. The corset being one of the well, most well-known ones. Unlike what you see in popular culture and media and trashy um, his, history movies, aka stuff that I watch a lot of, uh, the corsets were not, the, were not impediments that uh, banished women to having scars on their backs and forced them to not breathe very well. For the most part, Corsets were used to support the bust, support the back, and support the weight of the clothes because these clothes that they wore in the Victorian era, they can be up to eight to nine pounds worth of material. And having a corset without a corset, your entire body is carrying that weight. But with the corset on, the corset helps you carry all the weight of your body and the entire cor and the bust and the entire uh, garment, making you making you feel a lot lighter and a lot more practical. Here I am at a collaborative in Amesbury, Massachusetts called Inventive Labs, where I'll be talking to another senior about what she's doing for her internship here. Hi, I'm Alicia Verjohn. I'm a senior at Westford Academy. And for my capstone, I am doing an internship at Inventive Labs for five weeks. With two AP classes, I'll be doing 80 hours of work in total. And so far, my assignments have been to set up Zoom calls for the alumni. Here we are at Inventive Labs. We are a career prep program for students with ADHD, autism, and dyslexia. Right now, we are in the open common space where people can play ping pong, work on their portfolios and projects, 
and just hang out. This is one of our two conference rooms where people can meet to discuss their projects, ideas, and plans for the future. This is generally a space where people can be creative and productive, and yeah. These are our office spaces where people have their own individual cubicles where they can work in private and not have to worry about being in anyone else's way. You know, it's quiet, it's productive, and they're pretty cute. These are our office spaces, pretty simple. A chair, a desk, a lamp, everything you need. People bring in their own posters and pictures to personalize it. But yeah, this is really all it is, just a simple workspace. This is another common space where people can just sit around, talk, and read the quotes on the wall. We have about six just in this room, I think. Creativity is not a talent, it is a way of operating. Here at Inventive Labs, we pride ourselves on our students' creativity, imagination, and dedication to their interests. They all are super impressive and will do amazing things. This is another one of our creative spaces where people can collaborate, talk out loud, brainstorm, throw out any ideas they have, hence all the colorful sticky notes scattered on the walls. So I'm a co-founder at Inventive Labs. I started with Rick Fiery. Um, Rick and I really had a vision to kind of help folks, uh, we would say the next generation, kind of find their path going forward. So you know, from the beginning, we had to start the program. So that includes recruiting to bring people into the program. It includes all sales, marketing, et cetera. Uh, but during the program, uh, we consider ourselves, that title is guide. So what we do is we help guide folks through their journey to figure out the direction they're going to go. Sometimes it's identifying the career they want to be into. It's looking at you know, how do you get into that career? How do you network with people? Um, do I need to go to college? Can I get certification? So kind of what's the path forward? And we help guide them through the process. We run a gap year program uh, for college age students. Uh, what we do is we work with them to help them find out kind of their best fit in life. A lot of folks before they go into college, they're not quite sure there's so many things they can do or they're not sure what the possibilities are. So we work with them. We call it a discovery phase where they can look at all kind of potential careers they can go into. And from that, we weed down a big list down to a top 10 and eventually the top three. There's kind of three good paths in life that kind of match what I can do. Hi, I'm Joe Bergeron. Uh, I've spent the last few months working on uh, getting into the game industry. Uh, I have ended up creating two different games. One is still in uh, very early development, um, but I created a, first game was a 2D platformer game. The second one is a uh, uh, first person shooter uh, game that is uh, going to be uh, sci-fi and other than that I've been looking around of my next steps for the past session. So yeah this is CodeSpark or co project name is CodeSpark. Um, it is it's both the games are made in Unity. This is my newest game. Um, it's still in early development uh, uh, and it was made by Watching tutorials on YouTube uh, for a lot of this stuff, but it was also made through the the level of design is 100% myself. Besides taking assets from uh, from the Unity Asset Store. Uh, hi, my name is Mitchell Warren. I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. The work that I do here at Inventive Labs is uh, I'm kind of finding the career path that I want to pursue in life. And I started in the work field as a graphic designer, and that wasn't really what I wanted to do in the long run. So now at this lab, I'm trying to build my portfolio to be an illustrator. And the kind of work that I work on is a lot of hand drawing and digital art, um, from landscape design to character anatomy and I hope to one day make it into film or game companies as a concept artist. Here's a piece that I designed uh, a long time ago. Uh, it was supposed to be a portrait that's been inspired by uh, not only famous actor and songwriter Billie Eilish, but also 
uh, some other influential designs that I took from. And the goal with this portrait was really to highlight the digital drawing techniques that I learned and to kind of just showcase what I could do beyond just sketching and drawing. Right. This is uh, a portfolio piece I did while I was in college getting my associates in graphic design. Our goal was to design a label for a bottle and when I came up with the concept of this design I wanted it to be a rosé wine bottle and to have cultural influences in the design to be uh, more of an Eastern uh, Asian company. I decided to do my capstone at Inventive Labs because I thought it would be a great opportunity and a good experience since I've never done anything like it before. So far I've been setting up Zoom calls for alumni. There will be six calls in total, one for each year of people that have come through here and besides that I am conducting interviews with people who have professions related to research so I can gather information and give an overall impression to the incoming students who are interested in research. Three of the students will be going to graduate school, two in Florida and one in Georgia for video game design, graphic design, and creative writing. In our meeting, we were talking about this summer Spectrum Social Club, which we want to pilot this year. Generally, we'd be reaching out to middle schoolers and high schoolers and organizing them into groups of six where they can meet other people who are on the spectrum, talk about their interests and form connections. They'd be small groups of about six to start and we change them up so they get to meet new people each week. We also will keep them with students and friends from their own school. So my favorite part so far has been being the students. They've all been super nice, really interesting, and I just got to talk and hang out with them. Again, they were so nice to me and I really liked meeting them. You know, I, I don't know them very well yet, of course. You know, I wish them I wish them so much success in their lives. And they were all interesting, fascinating people and I'd love to meet I love to get to know them more. So I think the advantage for the students is really a chance to kind of see how the working world operates. So I think the school environment and the business environment are really two different type environments. Uh, I think in school things are a lot more defined. You have tests, you have projects, et cetera, that are graded. And in businesses, I just personally feel there's a lot more ambiguity as far as what is success, you never get graded. So I think the chance to work on projects outside the school environment to kind of see how they work and see how success ties into that. And also sometimes some projects morph. Sometimes you start in a project and a priority comes up and you change the different components. So I think just in understanding how the work world, work, the work world works, it's just big for the students. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, joining me on this little adventure to find out what other seniors are doing. Uh, I, I certainly had a lot of fun doing this. It was really nice socializing and meeting new people. Some of the people I didn't know, some of the people I did know, and it was really, really fun getting to know what they were doing and also just using the equipment and getting experience for this stuff it was also just a really good opportunity and I'm glad I could work it into doing something I love. I'm, I'm glad I could work learning and just having fun to the same thing. So this was just this was just a really fun experience altogether. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.